Hello everyone. One of the most common questions people like to ask me is how do you install the Extreme Core Injector for the PlayStation Classic? Well, I'm going to show you right now. Let's say, for instance, on the basis of the fact that you may or may not have my page hyperlinked, hotlinked, or even bookmarked. Simply open up your internet browser and type in Game FD Manic Release. And right now, I'm going to try to show you the fastest way to get right into the game here, so to speak. Once you get to the uh, link here, it should be the very first link once you type in Came Mathematic Release, you'll see a little nifty animation of Mario uh, basically traversing different environments. Look, multiverse here! Mario is now Samus Aran, a.k.a. Justin Billy, all that fun stuff. Hyphen, 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 hyphen. But once you go to my release page here, you can go down and you can get my release in one of two different ways. You could do the alternative course set link for Google Drive, or you could go all the way down to the bottom most portion of the page and simply download the asset file, which is termed came at the Manic Mini Classic Course 7-Zip Archive. Once you download that to your computer, you can simply use 7-Zip to extract it, and you'll get a nice little folder structure here. You have a folder within this, which uh, basically contains the contents for the Mega Drive, SNES, as well as the NES Classic release. And then, of course, you'll have one for the PlayStation Classic. You have an extra folder, which is an amalgamation of 20-plus years of emulation fun times. Uh, directly awesomeness there. But uh, once you have these all set in stone here, you're going to basically need a flash drive. I'd recommend sticking with something simple like a 16-gigabyte or a 32-gigabyte flash drive to start with. And you're going to want to format this. And uh, once you click, uh, right-click on it, click Format. And I'd recommend having, again, a 16-gigabyte or a 32-gigabyte flash drive. Uh, the file system, make it FAT32 to start with because typically NTFS or uh, EXT4, you're going to want to have a custom kernel to do that. But uh, for this, you can simply overmount files right to your flash drive with auto blame and run it as is in your controller port number two with a simple 16 gigabyte or 32 gigabyte flash drive. But uh, you need to have the volume label here as Sony as in capital S O N Y. And then you start it, format it, and once it's done, you can simply do the modifications right to it. And then in order to do the modifications, we're going to go into the KM. Uh, PSC folder. And then we're going to go to the AutoBleam folder. And again, this is going to be a simple overmounting of files right on your flash drive. Once you unplug it, the system goes back to stock. Nothing as far as like custom kernel flashing is necessary whatsoever for anything in my releases, unless you want to run stuff like Wi Fi adapters or keyboards and mice. But uh, let's go down here, and you're going to need two files in particular. You're going to need the AutoBleam Extreme, and of course you're going to need the PlayStation Classic Extreme Core Injector. So you want to install both of these to your flash drive, which you simply just formatted. And I'm going to get into the more nitty-gritty of why I'd recommend starting out with a 16 gigabyte or 32 gigabyte flash drive. But let's get this process on the road here. We're going to go into uh, this one right here. And again, it is a self-extracting executable. It is not a true executable. If you're on a uh, Windows, Linux, or Mac computer, you could do 7-zip to essentially just do this right to your computer. But we're going to do this like this. And we're going to click the little three dots here. And we're going to go down to the drive, which is the H Sony formatted drive. And we're going to click OK. And if you ever get prompt for a password, uh, simply type in KMFD. You'll see right here, show password, KMFD. A few things I actually have to do passwords on just because of false positive entries. But we're going to do this right here and let it extract to the drive. And while that's extracting, we're going to go to the next thing here. We need to do the extreme core injector as well. Same thing here. Little three dots here. And we're going to click the same exact drive. Uh, the H drive. And then you can go make a sandwich, use the bathroom, whatever as you will. It'll take you roughly like five minutes or so to install all this stuff. But while these are installing to the drive, we're going to go back to my release page and go over a few other things here. Go way, way to the top again. And one thing I'd like to really point out, this is very, uh, very most paramount here. If you ever have a bad day, feel stressed, depressed, sad, sorrowful, reach out to someone, a friend, a loved one. I mean, just do not think you have to battle things on your own. I mean, it's a tough, tough as nails world. But there are many people out there who are supportive and can give you love, care, and nurture, and just truly help you find your way. On my page, I have a suicide prevention link. I mean, if you need a number to call, simply click this link, and you have a number for virtually any place in the world. I mean, never feel that you have to do this on your own. I mean, never take for granted how precious the commodity of life truly is. And uh, thank you for listening to my little voice uh, chat there. But in case uh, you want to have other links there, we have my KMFD Manic YouTube page. And uh, we can just simply go to Google and type that in as well, KMFD Manic YouTube. And you'll actually go to my videos here and see some of the things that are going into release just by simply clicking the link here. And uh, go into my latest videos here. 
like going back for the last few months, you can see like uh, we have Laserdisc games working on MAME for PlayStation Classic. We're able to run like uh, PDF alternatives as far as ping files. I'm talking like ping files, not really JPEGs. We can run like Nintendo Powers, manuals, all that fun stuff on all the minis. And of course, we have MAME 2022 Extreme for PlayStation Classic. I'm running some cave shmups such as Akai Katana and of course, even like Death Miles using MAME 2022 Extreme. I have Judge Dread Arcade working. Uh, we have Super Mario War, a <laughs> great thing there. I got Play Choice 10 games working better on all the mini classics. We have uh, Night Raid working better. I mean, so many, many things. We got Philips CDI working better. We even have Atari Jaguar. And of course, uh, Game and Watch games. I mean, there are so many things. You can go to my videos and see that. Uh, see where this little thing is here. They're still extracting. Almost done. And of course, we got to worry about the games that we're going to play here. So we're going to go into the drive here. I typically just do a little folder called Dummy right here. And I copy my games right to the Dummy folder. And uh, I would have, like, my Nintendo folder, all that fun stuff. I'll give you an example of this right now. I have it all in my temp folder for right now. I'm simply just going to take all these out. And cut and paste them. I mean, when I had the stuff here, uh, I like to just put them right back in the dummy folder. But since I was doing a fresh install here, I put them in a different place temporarily. So I'm going to put them all here. And this is essentially once I boot this drive up, I'm going to be able to go to low content, start directory, and have all these right here to load with the cores. I'm going to boot the system up once this is all done and show you exactly what I'm talking about. And the other thing you need to worry about for a few things, I mean, obviously not for like Nintendo or Super Nintendo or most arcade games, you're going to have to worry about BIOS when you're running, uh, you know, BIOS files for stuff like Sega Saturn, 3DO, PlayStation 1, etc. And in the release here, uh, we're going to go into the release here. We're going to back out just a little bit here. And go into extras, which I told you is the amalgamation of so many awesome things. And we have a BIOS folder here. And right here we have a BIOS README as well as a BIOS cheat sheet printer from the PDF file that you can print out. And you can go down. It tells you what BIOS you need for each various core. So say, for instance, I am actually running like Flycast Extreme. It says I need a DC folder. And then I need these BIOS right here inside it. And I'm going to give you an example. Let's go to my other drive right now. The other Sony drive. I'm going into RetroArch. System, and here's my DC folder, and these are all my Dreamcast BIOS right there. So that's what you need to pretty much do based on that little README file in order to run Dreamcast games on your drive. And of course, you could ask me in the comments section on YouTube, Discord, Reddit, etc., and I'll be able to help you get your uh, act together as far as running stuff on Mini Classics. But if you want to run something larger than the 32 gigabyte drive, you're going to want to get a powered USB hub, and then you'll be good to go. But uh, this drive is about done here. It only took about five minutes to do this. Awesome sauce here. Now we're actually going to boot up and show you how this works. Okay, everyone. We're doing a showcase of Turtles in Time in HD for MAME 2003 Extreme. And we're doing a little bit of a hyper mode activate here. Let's go to resume. And uh, we're going through the various RAM ROM checks. Okay. Winners don't use drugs. I mean, how many games do you remember having these fun messages? I mean, just... Look at this awesome stuff right here. This is great. This is not in the home to be a general version, by the way. Reminds me of Kenny Loggins. This is so awesome. Okay, let's get the show on road here. Oh, hell yeah. And we're running HD right now, HD it's mode at base with the uh, Big 2003 Dream Hyper Mode. Big Apple 3M. Oh yeah. We can do four player mode activate as well. But uh, Cowabunga this, new collection that's coming up. <laughs> I wonder if they're going to have Hyper Mode in that collection. And you can even run the open for uh, Rusty Palooza on the Mini Classics as well, particularly the PlayStation Classic. Let's try doing a little bit of a four-player mode entry while we're in it. This is so damn fun to play. And again, if you don't want to run hyper mode, you don't have to. I'm going to show you how to activate hyper mode. Pizza time. Pizza time. Uh, let's try uh, going into input here. Hockey binds for each player. We're going to do uh, port one. Go up. And we're going to activate turbo for this by simply clicking X and going back. Again, you can push the start button to go back to default. But for right now, I'm going to activate it for my attack button. Then we're going to go back and go to port two binds. And I'm going to go to the device index, and since I only have one controller, not three other uh, people, family, loved ones, friends, etc. to play with right now, I'm going to do this on my own accord by using my one controller for all four controllers. So we're going to change this 
to a PlayStation Classic controller, which is what I'm using. When you're done, you can simply just turn it off, disable, but I have it on right now. Then I'm going to go up and activate Turbo on this one. Bam. I got to do it to uh, port 3 as well. Uh, go up. Bam. <laughs> Let's actually exit out. And then port 4. Uh, same thing. Device index. And I'll show you how to revert it back. And we should be able to do four player mode, activate all with turbo right now. Let's check this out. And I'm going to show you how to activate hyper mode, of course. And uh, you'll be able to run with it or without it. It'll be very, very prominent for running some of the more uh, ridiculously absurd games to run stubborn wise, such as the cave schmups. But uh, check this out. Let, 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 oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> oh, man. This is, the, this is the day and age when we used to go to an arcade and people put their clothes right on the cabinet. And uh, like, yeah, I want to play Leonardo next, I want to play Donatello next, I want to play Raphael next, I want to play, play Michelangelo next, and it's awesome, awesome stuff. And I'm, a, I'm assuming in the arcade version of Hero Heroes, uh, where they didn't have uh, Michelangelo's uh, weapon, uh, <laughs> uh, people are probably like, I don't want to use Michelangelo. <laughs> Oh, okay, this is so great. We're gonna do like a one or two stages there. Again, I'm gonna show you how hyper mode works because you're gonna use it for every floor. Oh yeah. And uh, a little bit of a trivia question: Who is that guy in the background? First person in the comment with the answer, you get a cookie. <laughs> Not an internet cookie anyway. You'll get some kind of reward. And I'll, I'll post a link to it just for you. It'll go to your email inbox or such. But in a mix up like, you know, the Superman villain, extra folder, I'm going to start putting a few surprises in there, uh, whether or not I'm doing releases or not. Uh, and as far as, like, the latest movies and such, I mean, what are you all looking forward to? I mean, I saw Bam already, fun, fun movie, looking forward to watching it again on HBO Max on April 19th. But I'm also in the horror movies, and I kind of want to see the new horror movie called X, which is like a crossover of, like, a, a group of young adults who decide they want to go into a country, uh, um, townhouse and such, and make basically an adult film, and uh, it, it's kind of crossed over with the uh, exploitation film from the late 1970s, like Texas Chainsaw Man. Oh, this should be an easy box, though. Yeah, I'm not really sure. I think uh, no matter what, I think the you know, don't turn into sponges. I'm pretty sure they have the same amount of energy, no matter what, if you play four times on that game. Why well, did Simpsons ever get a home console for? That's kind of disappointing. Yeah. I would have loved to see Simpsons on the home. I mean, imagine like we had Tim and T2, the arcade game, as a home port. We had like the additional stages. And uh, imagine something like that with Simpsons. That would have been incredible. Come on, let's take this back to the down. <laughs> oh, yeah. We gotta show you the other uh, great, great, great. Let's kick show. <laughs> let's show. By the way, uh, it's a. Ghostbusters fan, I'm looking forward to the next Ghostbusters game, which is going to be coming out as well, where it's going to have a multiplayer component where you can actually play as a ghost this time. Well, I want some mode 7 action here. So you got to see a little bit of a second stage here, and then I'm going to show you how to do the hyper mode action stage. Oh yeah, come on, come on, come on. This is such a great game. I remember when they used to have the tech demonstration uh, in malls and such of the Super Nintendo originally, and uh, it was just so cool seeing this game on demo. And this is the, one of the very first games that got a Super Nintendo. Along with Super Ghost and Ghost, Super Cat 3 and 4, and all in fun things. And of course, Super R Type. And the nice thing about Super R Type is it's actually a combination of levels from uh, R Type 2 Arcade and R Type 1. So you can actually play the arcade version of uh, R Type 2, and it has levels from Super R Type, and except there's no slowdown, it's going to be playing Hyper Mode Engine from the Cat I think I'm missing him here. He's flashing, but he's almost done. Maybe they did add extra energy to him. There we go. Yeah, I need to really see uh, if there's like brain data which actually shows him with more energy or not. I mean, you know what I mean? Where some games, they'll just give enemies more energy if you play multiplayer mode, I think. But look at this awesome throw. I love where you like grab enemies and throw them around back and forth, blah, blah, blah. It's so cool. But in any case, uh, when you install the injector, you're going to know something which is going to be a little bit out of the ordinary. And, uh, Primarily for the PlayStation Classic due to a bug with how the multi thread works. I'm going to show you exactly how it works right now. <laughs> this is so damn cool. Oh, the hectic, frenetic action. Makes me want to go back and watch like some TNT movies. The thing is, uh, there's always a trend where like, hey, some new uh, TNT game comes out, everybody suddenly starts getting into TNT again. For me, TMNT is a daily shot. I mean, I've always loved TMNT. There's got to be some little old cowabunga thought in my mind each and every day. There we go. 
Oh, shit. Oh. We're gonna go in here, and here's what you're gonna see. When you first go into the injector for the very first time, you're gonna go into a video. You're gonna see right here where it says threaded video. By default, this is going to be off. But uh, in order to activate the hyper mode, which is gonna pretty much trigger the various things in main 2003 stream, 3DO, Dreamcast, etc., you're gonna need to turn this on. But after you turn it on for the very first time with no content loaded, mind you, you need to do it where there's no game loaded whatsoever. You're gonna go to quick menu. You're going to uh, <laughs> go to restart RetroArch, and once you restart RetroArch, uh, do not try loading any games. Instead, you're going to load the Extreme Turbo Boost, which is gonna basically give you roughly 200 to 300 megabytes of temporary virtual RAM to utilize to have this hyper boost. And it's gonna work on all the cores such as Dreamcast, uh, 3DO, PlayStation 1, etc. It's gonna give you like a nominal 14% plus boost in addition to what you already have. And uh, you have to do this this way. And if you decide you don't wanna use Turbo Boost, simply go back into uh, video and just turn threaded video off and, go, and then uh, go to restart. And you're good to go.